Hello everyone, I'm Matt Hoots with Sawhorse. Welcome to Home Talk. Today's episode, we're gonna focus on how to organize your garden tools. Now, I've got a bunch of garden tools behind me. They've just been piling up around the house and in the garage, and I wanna get them out of the way so I can have a place to work in my shop. Let's take a look at some of the tools and supplies you need for this project. I've got a drill, and I've got a 1 5 8 inch Forzner bit. You can also use a hole saw. I've got a pile of screws for fastening it to the wall. I've got a speed square tape measure, and for cutting, I've also got a jigsaw. If you don't have a jigsaw, I'll go over some other types of saws and hand saws that you can use. Some clamps for clamping it down just in case. A pencil for marking and layout. I've got a couple scrap blocks of two by fours, that way we can clamp it into place. And I've got another two by four here so I can create a template. Now all this is gonna be cutting, be cutting out of longer two by fours. And I've got a two by four here. This one's actually cedar, it's left over from a job site. But you can use yellow pine, white pine, or cedar, it really doesn't matter. All right, let's get started. All right, so this design is based on a typical shovel. And the handle of the shovel is less than an inch and a half. So we're gonna, we're gonna make our notch in this piece of wood inch and five eighths. And the spade of the shovel is a little over eight inches, so we're gonna go 10 inches um, between each notch that we make in this piece of wood. So again, this is just a template that we're using, and with this, once I make all the cuts, then we'll use this to mark the rest of the pieces of wood. We have four pieces of wood to cut, and I'm just using this to, make, uh, to expedite things a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark it at three inches, and since we've gotta cut two holes for the handle to go through, we'll mark it at three inches, and then right above that, we'll mark it another inch and three quarters. So the next one's at 13 inches. And again, I'm gonna go an inch and three quarters beyond that as well. The next one's 23 inches. And again, inch and three quarters beyond that. 33, and you guys, you guys can make this piece as, as long as you want. So the next thing we're gonna use is the speed square. Let's get the shovel out of the way. So now that we've got these marks on the piece of wood, we're gonna basically make some angles. And the angle that I'm gonna to choose to use is 25 degrees. And this makes a good slot for the rake or shovel to, to slide into. So I'm gonna mark two more lines parallel to each other. And again, if you don't have all these tools, we're going to have a piece of paper that you can download an eight and a half by 11 template guide that has all these on it, and you can just use that and cut it out and mark these out on your piece of wood. Mark one more out. All right, so the last thing we wanna do is, because we don't wanna cut all the way through this, because we need the back part to be intact so we have something to slide the tools into. So I've got a straight edge here, and this measures about an inch and a quarter. So I'm gonna line this up with the back edge. Then I've got one more mark that I'm gonna... And these are just guides for us to drill through and cut through. Now we try to keep it simple. We try to keep this where you can use a basic, some basic hand tools, and I'm gonna use a drill in this case. So I've got a couple blocks. I'm gonna demonstrate how to do the first one. So this one right here, I'm gonna take the Forstner bit, line it up with the three lines that I have right there, and start to make the cut. We've got a nice hole here. And the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut off these two pieces right there. And for that, I'm gonna use the jigsaw. All 
All right, let's take a look at that. So this right here is the notch that the tool is going to slide into. Now I've got another 40 more of these to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, do the rest of these and then we'll show you how to assemble this and hang it on the wall. All right, it's almost time for assembly. Let's, let's review some of the things we've done to date. We went over how to cut out these notches right here. I've got 44 of them. I've got four of these boards total. And next we're gonna go how to lay out the ledger board, which is gonna hold all this together. Then after that, we screw it together and install it and then we're done. So I've got three of these boards and I've got notches that I cut into these. So I've got three notches like this, which is gonna hold all four of the vertical boards together. So the horizontal boards, I've got these cut at 60 inches. And since I've got four of these, these are gonna be 20 inches on center. So I've got 20 marked right here, but since this is a two by four, which is an inch and a half, I'm going to mark this at 19 and a quarter. And I'm gonna to go to the next one. So we've got 40 inches minus three quarters of an inch. I like to mark this at 39 and a quarter. And I'm marking through all three at the same time, just so it's more efficient. And what carpenters do to let you know where to actually put something, I'm putting an X where the center is. And this way, when we screw these together, we know which side of the line to put it on. All right, next step is assembly. All right, now what I've done is I've laid out all of the boards that are going to go vertically in the wall, and I'm gonna go ahead and put the horizontal ledgers in. I've got the middle one in first, then we'll put the top and the bottom one in. And the reason I'm assembling it on the ground then lifting it in place is very lightweight. It's easy to, for me to manage and probably most of you all to manage. And it's easier trying to assemble this on the ground versus trying to put the ledger boards up in the wall and assembling it that way. This also makes it stronger. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna screw this in through the back because the ledgers are gonna go up against the wall and I'm gonna put two screws in each one. And I'm using cedar, but most other woods that you can be using are pretty soft woods, so you don't have to worry about it splitting. And I'm gonna come in at about um, an inch off each edge. Now, if this was a hardwood, I'd probably pre-drill first. So I'm gonna do two for each of these. And remember before we had that little line? So the line is right here. I've got it lined up perfectly. I'm gonna go ahead and screw these in now. These are all 20 inches on center. Now that you've got the first two in, go ahead and put six more, and that's two in each of the additional boards and then once you have all those in you can screw in the top and bottom ledgers as well. All right after a little bit of wrestling I finally got this into its final destination and now the final step is to attach it to the wall. Since I know that there's a stud right here these ledger boards are going to act as a good way to hold things in place without us having to find studs for each of these. Now I'm going to go ahead and drill it in place. And it is sound. The next step is to take a level. I'm going to make sure this is level. I'll adjust the base back and forth a little, little bit. Then all I have to do is find a couple more studs. Then the final installation is done. We started to put some of the tools in place and realized that some of the tools just don't really fit in these slots. So we've got these ledger boards. I'm going to go ahead and put up a couple nails. That way we can hang up some of our loppers and our clippers. And what's nice about this, it doesn't really get in the way of the, any of the other tools. And we've got three or four places you can put this. And again, you can, nail in, you can nail into some of these. So if you have more than three pairs, which you might have, you've got plenty of places to nail into to hang these. What's nice about this design is you've got four pieces going across. So if you have something that only fits across two, you still have room for the other two on the other side. We used a five gallon bucket for some of the tools like post hole diggers that didn't fit on the rack very cleanly and overall we were able to get over 30 tools on this whole assembly which made room for other items in the garage such as soccer goals, basketballs, and also soccer balls. 
Thanks again for watching our video, and for your convenience, we've loaded up the next video. Just click on the next button over there. And also, if you liked the video and you want to see more just like it, go ahead and subscribe to our channel. Make sure you hit the notifications, and we'll see you next time.